Well, another foggy day. It's so much like July right now in San Francisco. August usually has high fog and not much drizzle, but we're just in reverse. We're low fog drizzle. That's what we get in July. So, after quite a day yesterday, Saturday, where we had skirmishes in Virginia. Three people dead, not many people taken to jail over all that. One person charged with murder. They don't know who the person was that shot the helicopter down yet. Mushy. This is sort of like a three-in-one story. <laughs> so, a 600-page report about climate assessment came out in the U.S. It's the final draft. It's something that's required here in the U.S. by the U.S. Congress. The orange man tried to make it sound like it was top secret, even though it's for the public. The uh, assessment is a very conservative report and always has been. The people in charge always make it to seem like it's some kind of top secret document, which it is not. It's nothing new. Uh, the, there were some main points of the report. One was, of course, uh, huge amounts of sea level rise up to eight feet by the end of the year by the end of the year, by the end of 20, 2100. They say that the uh, sea level rise by 2050 will be about 12 inches every 12 years. So about an, uh, an inch a year until 2100, which then it'll be two inches a year of sea level rise. Now what they're concerned about is how do countries work with such incredible sea level and climate change because where do you put a port city? Uh, how do you dock your big ships? You know, there's so many reasons why you don't want sea level to be changing that fast. Farmland being uh, ruined, uh, a whole state taken offline. They listed many problems that uh, we've talked about here on this channel over and over, so uh, not, not, not much new. They were also very concerned about soil moisture. As w the temperature goes up, the soil mo moisture leaves and you get dry soil, which then uh, blows around as they're calling dust bowl or dust bowlfication. And um, they're worried about that because we'll be losing our precious farmland, which I have talked so many times about, haven't I? And the, big, the third big thing they were concerned about was surprises and extremes. So, in other words, every once in a while we're going to have a, a surprise storm that will take out more and more humans as time goes on. Bigger hurricanes, bigger tornadoes, bigger floods, longer droughts, hotter temperatures. Today we're seeing 120 both in Iraq and Kuwait and 117 all over the, mid uh, the Middle East. Temperatures are rising at such a huge rate. So that brings me to my second point. And that is when climate gets so bad that food can no longer be uh, grown and uh, supplied to 7.6, 7.9, 8 billion people, there are going to become some serious shortages. They'll probably mostly be in fruits, vegetables, that sort of thing. Uh, wheats in your cereals will be the last thing that will go out and potatoes. They'll still be around for quite a while. But shortages of food are going to happen shortly the world's supply of food is sort of staying at a level right now which isn't at a very good level about 12 days of food supply if we had no income of food anywhere on the planet it would la we would have about 12 days worth of food so my point here is is that the uh, food shortages are definitely coming without a doubt and what we saw yesterday here in the US that was pretty serious using vehicles to kill people with shooting helicopters out of the sky as I've said before this is just the beginning this is just a skirmish can you imagine what it's going to be like when we're hungry and these uh, uh, outraged humans of various different skin colors will come after other skin colors saying that you're eating all the food you're the problem kill all the fill in the blank that's probably coming within well they say we're, humans will be dead in 10 years that means like three four years we'll be seeing something like that here in the u.s when when you see groups of people with torches coming right down the main street carrying guns bats and that sort of thing you know you're not too far away <laughs> 
Never seen anything like that before in my life. I just, uh, I've, I've been around a lot of protests, but nothing like that. That just uh, blew up out of nowhere, and people started joining the uh, white racists. There were quite a few Virginians who weren't going to put up with that. And you saw what happens. Can you imagine when we're starting to get shortage food, what's going to happen? But yet it's all up to us. We can either do something about climate change or we can ignore it. Right now, 98% of the uh, world is ignoring it, it looks like. If they were really serious about it, we would have come up with an alternative to fossil fuel by now. But the fossil fuel industry has a lot to do with not coming up with an alternative. Oh. All right, all. Well, it's been quite a week in uh, Orange Land from the orange man as usual. Never a dull moment. So, with that, I appreciate all your ups and downs and new subscribers. And until next time.